Hello, welcome to another episode of Greg Tech New Horizons. This is Zyphir. Today, we had a request for a new citizen in our slime farm. So we feed you a boat, and we feed you a flint and steel. Welcome to the family Hachuri. And I guess we'll heal some of you up from all the pollution. You little buddy could use some work. And you want to change your food on me a hundred times, okay. There you go, Hachuri. You're part of the tribe now. Now next, since we did update the pack, I'd like to install this new multi-block, the Extreme Extermination Chamber. An industrial mob farm coming right to our hands. Now we can just use our blueprint and see exactly what all we'll need. Now with pretty much all the parts, I should just be able to come down into our new room that I built before the update and start to place all of our blocks. Now I think with this last layer of glass, this should complete the multi-block structure. We might have to move some hatches around as it doesn't like its orientation. There we go. Shift right click the controller so mobs will not spawn infernal. Now we just need to make ourselves a little drawer network. One more modifier. And now we'll just add a bunch of luck to our new cleaver that will operate inside of the extermination chamber. We can pop this in the input bus. Now we just need to conduit our outputs. Now in between me updating to the stable version, I did go ahead and craft this powered spawner as I was playing around with the extermination chamber a little bit before we updated and fully installed it. So yes, I do have a Spitfire skeleton spawner already prepared. But you might be asking yourself, why a Spitfire skeleton? Well, looking at the mob drop loot table, the Spitfire skeleton actually has the chance to give us both bones and fire charge. Not only does it give us one bone, it gives us a chance at three. All I should have left to do is place this trash can down, which we're going to insert on red channel with a filter. We're going to blacklist bones, arrows, skeleton skulls, and fire charges. Now we can place our powered spawner inside the machine. Now I just thought about it, I need a good way to shut this off so it's not just running continuously. We'll add a level emitter to the top of here. We'll have it emit a level based off of bones, and I say we go for, I don't know, 512. Just need this device to come online, then we can patch everything up and give it a test. Maybe not. Um... I yeah, don't really know what's going on with AE at the moment, but it's screwing with everything, as we can see. Everything is unlinked slash not online anymore. <laughs> what happened? All I did was add one channel. This is going to take some time to figure out. I'll come back when I have the extermination chamber done. <laughs> Naturally, as soon as I stop recording, I find the problem. This line here is our main P2P channel line that runs through the whole base. This is the line that we drove down for the extermination chamber. They're connecting right here. We add some cable anchors and reattach. We should see this system get itself together in a minute. Everything come online? Uh-huh. The brain is active again. Like I said earlier, we should be able to patch everything up. As soon as we see this level emitter come online, we should be clear to test out this extermination chamber. Alright, let's give it a whirl. We can see our Spitfire skeleton has spawned in. 
We are getting liquid XP as it straight slaughters them. And we can see we have items coming in to our drawer network. My only problem is I don't see any skeleton skulls yet. That's one of the things I really wanted. The whole reason I made a cleaver actually. Maybe we'll swap the weapons out with the one that I use. I mean, if we're not going to get any skulls, I don't see why not. Now that that's done now, though, welcome to the next thing that I did in between episodes. Can you take a wild guess where this is going? Introducing <laughs> our new precise assembler. This is what allowed me to rip out those two processing arrays that I just walked past, and also allow me to make some items with the Good Generators mod. If you know Greg Tech, I'm sure you're familiar with this. You can use a screwdriver on the controller to change between precise and normal assembler mode. Normal does exactly what you would guess. Precise is used for additional recipes. Inside our door here, we have all the wiring. These are assembly circuit numbers one through nine on this side. Some which obviously I haven't populated yet. Five, seven, six. The bottom we have several different hatches for fluids. This one I don't have linked yet because I don't have an extractor for glass. But yes, we have all the different types of fluids we usually need for assembler crafts, which are just sent upwards into the part that's not decorated. We have a dense cable line that goes into a new P2P connection for the precise assembler, and right now we're only utilizing 19 of the channels. This other side, I have a couple interfaces for recipes with no circuit numbers required, as well as our one for wires, or cables, rather, which we might have to add a couple more of in the future. Now, all of this was done specifically so we could start gearing up for this Nequata line. I'm really tired of having to smelt the dust straight into ingot or straight into nuggets and then alloy smelt nuggets into ingots. That's not going to work any longer. Now, we need the neutron activator to be able to run Nequata adamantium solution, which in turn gives us the Nequata rich solution and several different byproducts, blah blah blah, that's part of the process. To get this neutron activator, we do have to use precise assembler mode, and I noticed we had to get the Mach 2s, whereas the machine itself required Mach 1s. So I took the time in between episodes to figure out how this machine worked, and I did get enough to build two Neutron activators, I don't know how many we'll need, I just remember Threefold used two, I believe, in his series, so I made sure to do two worth, just in case. But I now know how this machine works. I had originally run into a problem when I tried to do the recipe, as these Mach 2 computation stations do require LUV power. I upgraded the hatch, but I forgot... In the tooltip, it states machine casing and energy hatch limits the voltage tier the machine can work on. I had the LUV energy hatch up top, but I didn't have the casings for the multi block on the bottom here as LUV. They were still IV. And once I upgraded those, it allowed me to run the recipe just fine. Now, the rest of this recipe should be fairly easy. I think I actually already built all the parts I need for this. Okay, maybe not this, because I remember it was a rabbit hole to get into, and I figured I would do it on camera. Because, like, look at this. Hold on, let me go, let me go back. We need four neutron sources. Dense steel plates, no problem. High density uranium, rabbit hole. Wrapped uranium, this I'm not worried about. Graphite uranium mixture. Like, why is this such... A pain. Why is this so gated? This is stupid. Let me do some math, figure out how many we need. Alright, now with the graphite uranium mixture and tungsten carbide, we should be able to make these in the assembler. In the slot with the program 1, which I'm actually gonna, as I come to these, slowly start converting over to the input bus ghost circuit. Love that that was added. 
Little bit long of a recipe, but nothing we can't handle, and it does multiple at a time. Now for every four of these, we need two I, T, and T. But I think since we have this just sitting, we'll go ahead and batch up a bunch more of this. And we just come to our implosion compressor and slap all this wrapped uranium inside. Now we just put these in our compressor, and just like that, we have two neutron sources, and I guess some extra high density uranium that we don't need. Might need it later. Now, if we come down here, I should be able to switch this over to precise mode and run around the back to input our fluids. I have separate hatches at the top for precise mode filling. And then in any of our empty input buses, and put our computation stations, emitters, and neutron sources. And I believe, yes indeed, we now have two neutron activators. Now we just have to figure out how to start the Naquata process. I'm just running into all sorts of problems at the moment, running out of liquids that I need. So give me a little bit and I'll come back when we've got a majority of the Naquata line assembled. Alright, I'm not too keen on exactly how this is set up and laid out, but we have Naquata pretty much up and running. We have the first step of the process, these three large chemical reactors making our first solvent, the distillation tower, the large chemical reactor for the King of Acid, EBF, the centrifuge, the last LCR. All I really need to do is hook up this bad boy here. Ladies and gentlemen, the moment you've all been waiting for. We'll come and set our machine control cover to enable with redstone. And we'll watch our MEVs climb. Hopefully we see it get up to about 224 and stop. Alright, there we are. We have it officially being regulated at around 224 MEVs. Let's go ahead and activate this sucker. Hopefully this works right. Great, it is. Now, let's go ahead and disable this for a moment so we can set up the autoclave. Now, I think I just need a couple conveyors. If I could spell it right. We'll have one here to export into our interface then we'll have another here to pull in the sodium hydroxide did I even set that? there we go she's running we should see the fluid auto output which should mean we see some P507 back in here we do and I think it's safe to say we can enable the whole system. Now I guess we can go ahead and grab the rest of the quests. And last but not least. Almost success. Our number 14 electrolyzer is here, so I think it's safe to say we can go ahead and add gallium hydroxide to here. Should pull it in automatically. Maybe we need to add another goldfish in. No, we'll leave it open because we have two things that can get pulled from here. It's okay. Everything is fine. Now that breaks down to even more oxygen and more hydrogen, as well as returning our gallium back to us. All around wonderful things. Now eventually I can put this on passive, but for now I think it's say if we can just order a bunch of this up and our chemical reactor in the clean room will just get to work maybe oh it needs item auto output on okay yes there we go Naquata just coming in straight by the dust everything is beautiful and maybe 30 minutes later we finally have our Naquata coil upgrade. 
This in turn opened up our Naquata Alloy quest, which will finally open us up into the Fusion quest line. Now this is going to take absolutely forever, but I'm fully prepared to get started on this and we'll see just how far we can get. Well, if you tuned into the live stream, I'm sure you were able to realize we did not do anything that I planned on doing. Um, but we did get Botania started here. Um, but there's something I really want to focus on heavy right now. So in order to unlock the fusion quest, we're going to need the Naquata Alloy, as I mentioned prior, which is going to require Trinium. Now to get this, we just need to process a little bit of our uh, Naquata line a little bit further. All we really need is a large chemical reactor that I might run at IV or LUV power. That will turn our enriched Naquata Oxide mixture into regular as well as Trinium Sulfate and enriched Naquata Rich Solution. What a tongue twister. That enriched solution we then send through an autoclave which will give us concentrated enriched Naquata Sludge and return some of our P507. Then that concentrated enriched Naquata Sludge goes through one more neutron activator which will give us a bunch of dusts here. And that's really what I want to set up next. Now I just shifted this one over a block and forward so that we can fit the second one directly next to it. I have a feeling eventually these will be moved, but at least to get some of our stuff processed now, we'll drop the second one here. Alright, the second one is almost fully built. We're just waiting on the processor machine casings for the top and the bottom. I think I decided the very back here. We'll go ahead and put the autoclave as well as the LCR, the last step of the process. So we have another little batch of P507 that we can use for this next part of the chemical process. Just have to manually insert it for the first time. And I think I have already hooked up the power. We should be able to test this out and make sure it does exactly what we want it to do. Did see waste liquid automatically go into its super tank over here. And the autoclave is not filling up for some reason. I know why. There we go. And so we should see this shut off here relatively soon as I have the fluid detector cover set to 30,000. Looks like they're finally done. Let's go ahead and finish the multi block. Now in theory, I think this should give us what we uh, are looking for in the grand scheme of things. We check the uses on this one more time. We can see we'll get low quality Naquadria, sodium sulfate, and enriched Naquata sulf sulfate dust. So we can check our ME system for that in just a minute. Looks like we're in business here. Now as far as this trinium sulfate goes, we can electrolyze it six at a time, get some oxygen, sulfur, and trinium itself. Okay, there it goes. I don't know what took so long, but 16 trinium and counting are our first pieces of Naquata alloy ingots, which finally unlocks the quest for starting fusion. As we can see, this is going to require quite a bit of material, so let me go in and get started on crafting this, and we can dive into figuring out how to set it up. Now, while we wait for this massive amount of LUV superconductor to smelt up, we'll go ahead and upgrade our hammer, which, if you didn't see that in that quick of a time span, that's going from 18 mining speed up to 33 up a mining level, and up a ton of durability. We'll fill up our oxygen tank, and head back to Mars for the fourth time. Jump back down into our hole, and test out our new hammer. Wow, look how fast this is. What I failed to mention is that we're going to mine right into another cave. Cavern. Die, spider.
Now I did find out a little hack. If you press J and turn on underground caves, you can see pretty much every single one. So I've been digging these little lines out to these different caves, and we can come back here eventually with a bunch of buckets and a tank, and have another form of harvesting bacterial sludge. Might not be ideal, but it will do us for now. Now this probably isn't going to be very necessary to come into all these little pools to collect the bacterial sludge, as we'll have an ender quarry set up before too much longer. Well, that's always good. You know, why not just knock out two birds with one stone and mine a, a bunch of redstone as well? We always seem to want more redstone. And our final count. 255 stacks of Mars cobblestone, 10 of subsurface, and a little close to two stacks of red granite. Time to return home. Going up and returning home and we drop him right here behind our quantum pipe and watch everything quickly disappear look how quick that stack is going down it's not being processed it's just going into the pipe don't worry all this redstone and ruby to be processed down oh i almost forgot to turn the hatch sideways and we can see this one start to fill up because it's currently being occupied by all of this stone. Well, you guys, this is Future Apex here, by the way, if you couldn't tell. This episode turned out to be entirely too long uh, as I'm sitting here editing footage, so I'm actually about to split it into two parts. Um, if you made it all the way to the end of this one, thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This next episode, part 2 of episode 23, this is what you have to look forward to. And any minute now, we'll have a dragon egg straight from auto crafting. Bada boom, bada bing. So yeah, anyways, next episode we have the entire process on how I was able to accomplish that. And these little guys here that tend to be nice little harvesters for a passive income of mixed crystal clusters. That's how I get my balance shards for nether stars. Like seriously, I can expand this so much if I want to. Yes, I know infused gold is coming. That's in episode 24. But these guys are so cool. Watch them do their thing. Anyways, like I said, thanks for watching. And I'll see you guys in about a week for part 2 of episode 23. In. It's already recorded. <laughs> See you later.